uh, a very warm good morning to all of you so we are back again with the entire month of november get, getting wiped out because of the rain none of the programs could be conducted so today we are back on stage we have with us dr chitra madhavan who is going to take us through the arunachaleshwara temple at trivandrumalai today she is being given vocal support by archana and aarti just a few words on dr chitra madhavan it's redundant all of you will be already knowing but yet for the purpose of formality i am completing it chitra madhavan has a ma and mphil in indian history and a phd in ancient history and archaeology she is the recipient of two post doctorate fellowships she has published nine books history and culture of tamil nadu in two volumes vishnu temples of south india in five volumes and uh, south india uh, and uh, sanskrit education and literature in ancient and medieval tamil nadu an epigraphical study on temples of kanchipuram she has written the text for a coffee table book snapshots of a bygone era a century of images which contains about 100 photographs of monuments of india she has also co-edited a book south india heritage which contains 500 articles on various aspects of south india's heritage and culture and has edited a book kalakshetra sculpture which contains 20 articles on iconography by well known authors on this subject she has also compiled books on the sri rangam temple and the varadaraja perumal temple kanchipuram she regularly conducts heritage tours to places of historical and archaeological significance in india and abroad i welcome her to make the presentation very good morning to all of you namaskaram i can't tell you how it feels to be in front of a live audience having spent close to 2 years in front of a computer monitor at the outset i would like to thank uh, shri tyaga brahmagana sabha for inviting me here this morning and to mr chandrashekaran in particular and uh, to these two lovely young musicians my heartfelt thanks it's been lovely coordinating with them so we are going to <clears throat> tirunelveli today all of you must have many times but we are going to look at this from a slightly historical perspective today so uh, who doesn't know about this temple who doesn't know about this sacred hill here the the hill arunachalam itself is a shivalinga and uh, look at our ancients look at where they built temples or where the gods chose to reside on a hill top on an island uh, with the with a hill sacred hill the shivalinga at the backdrop just look at this uh, photo in front of you look at how well laid out this uh, temple is with nine gopurams have you ever counted the gopurams the nine gopurams in all three on the east and uh, two in each of the other directions we'll be going through all that in uh, very great detail so arunachaleshwara uh, annamalayar and uh, his uh, consort uh, parvati apita kuchambal unna mulayar not unna malayar there is a, a small spelling mistake here you will have to forgive me for that so this temple all of 25 acres that we see today initially at what time this temple came up none of us will know it's lost in the mists of time it must have been a small little shrine with just the shivalingam there in worship perhaps in a wooden structure that is the garbhagraha or perhaps in a brick structure we won't know supported by metal that's how all the temples of india started out especially the temples of south india especially the temples of tamil nadu looking at this sprawling temple campus today who would have thought that would have been the origin and then century by century maybe decade by decade it grew and it grew and it grew to become what it is today and we will uh, in the course of this lecture 
trace the evolution of uh, the temple architecture and find out when e most of the structures were built with the help of the photographs. Uh, there isn't just one temple tank here, there are several. Given the fact that this is such a, such a big campus, the backdrop with the gopurams over here, as I said, each, each, each has come up over many a long time. I was lucky to get this very old picture of a very quaint, peaceful, tranquil town before all that uh, haphazard building activity set in. There is still tranquility here inside the temple's uh, campus. That hill, uh, we all know about the Girivalam. We know, all know about the Adi uh, Annamalayar temple that is supposed to be the first temple before this came up. But that will not be the focus of my uh, talk because this is in this temple itself there is far too much to say within the course of a lecture. And before I proceed with this, I would also like to say that there is absolutely no way that a lecture like this or even a book or a documentary or an article, whatever, can do full justice to this temple. Like Madurai, like Sri Rangam, like uh, Chidambaram, like Bhagaraja Perumal temple or Ekambarnada temple in Kanchipuram, this is one of the largest temple complexes of uh, Tamil Nadu, which means of India on the whole. And uh, literally, 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 Almost all the kings of Tamil Nadu and some from outside as well, as we will see in the course of this lecture. Let's not forget common people like us have all contributed into making what it is today. So little by little, we'll get into the temple step by step and find out how it became what it is today. But for now, over to the musicians. Tarunarka Kanti Vijitam Tarunarka Kanti Vijitam Analaswarupam Urushartadana Niratam Paramatma Rupam Karuna Rasabdhim Apita Kuchadhina Aruna Chali Anisham Manasasmarami 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 When you, we walk into most of the temples of uh, South India, especially the bigger ones, we notice many inscriptions on the walls. But uh, we don't pay any attention to them simply because we don't know how to read them. They are in very many scripts that we don't understand <clears throat> and we think we won't understand the language when they are read out to us, but we will. And this is the thing about inscriptions. The languages haven't changed much over the centuries. The scripts have. So, if there is someone who can read out the script to us, or if we learn to read the script, the language they speak will be very sweet, just like the music you heard. Sweet things they'll tell us. So, what are they? What are these inscriptions in the Tirunelveli Temple about? Uh, what are they telling us? We understand that this is a very ancient temple. We understand that. We know about dynasties like the Pallavas and the Pandyas, early dynasties of Tamil Nadu. But their inscriptions are not found here. Why are they not found here when they must have contributed to this temple? Simply because it has undergone renovations over many centuries and the earliest ones may have been lost to us. So which is the earliest inscription that we are finding on the walls of the temple today? It's a 9th century Chola inscription of the time of 
Aditya Chola. And then from there on, but subsequently you have many, many, many Chola inscriptions. And then you have some later Pandya inscriptions. You have Hoysala. I'll come to Hoysala later. Hoysala inscriptions and more than 48 Vijayanagara period inscriptions. Now, I have selected some particular epigraphs, inscriptions, just to, uh, just for us to understand how names of this temple, of this deity have changed over the centuries. We talk about changing of road names now. Some of us are for it, some of us are against it. At that time, they had no choice. Names changed and they were just there. So, Aditya Chola's time, this is the first Aditya Chola who was the son of Vijayalaya. I don't want this to sound like a history class, but we need some history here. And this god whom we call Annamalayar or Arunachaleshwara today, those names weren't there. The name that was there was Tiravanath Mahadevar. And then we come to the time of his son Parantaka Chola, 10th century, and the name was Tiruvannamalai Mahadevar. And then you will be very surprised to know that a dynasty called the Rashtrakutas who ruled over much of Karnataka and parts of Maharashtra uh, invaded the Chola country. In fact, that army went right up to Kanyakumari, but uh, Tamil Nadu didn't become part of the Rashtrakuta empire. And one particular king, Krishna, uh, who uh, came here, they contributed to many of these temples. And the name of the god in this temple was called, you'll be surprised now, Tiruvannamalai Arvar. Aren't we used to uh, thinking of this name Arvar as one of the 12 Vaishnava saints, Nambarvar, uh, Andal, etc., etc. But then when we get into deep into these inscriptions, we'll understand that the word Arvar was applied to Vishnu himself. This name Arvar was also applied to God Shiva. So we have a Chola... Uh, Rashtrakuta inscription telling us that he was Tiruvannamalai Arvar. And then coming back to the Cholas, there was, if you have read uh, Kalki's Pony and Shelvan, you will know that Raja Raja had an elder brother who was murdered before he became the king. He was Aditya Karikala. One of his inscriptions was there, which he left behind when he was a prince, and that was Tiruvannamalai Antar. And then Uttama Chola, the immediate predecessor of Aditya Ch um, Raja Raja Chola, again. Tiruvannamalai Arvar and uh, in the reign of Raja Raja Chola again he was Tiruvannamalai Mahadevar. Pandian inscriptions again there is something very interesting to note here they call him Thiruvan, this, they call this temple Tiruvannamalai Tirupati can you believe that so these are all the different 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 names that have changed over the uh, centuries and uh, this is these are how the inscriptions on the walls over a long period of time, starting with the Cholas, through the Pandyas, through the Hoysalas, Rashtrakutas, Vijayanagara, this is how they all are. They speak many languages and they give us a whole lot of information. We also understand that this temple in Tirvannamalai is one of the Panchabhuta Stalams. That is common knowledge, but it needs to be recorded here. For the five elements of nature, Prithvi, Ap, Tejo, Vayu and Akash, so we start with the Ekamarnada temple in Kanchipuram, which has the Prithvi Linga, the Linga made of earth. We go to Thiruvanaika on the island of uh, Srirangam, the Jambukeshwara temple, that's the up water Lingam. We come to Thiruvannamalai, this is the Tejas Lingam with which the Stalapuranam is so closely connected and more about that uh, later. Shri Kalahastishwara uh, in Shri Kalahasti in Andhra, which is the Vayu Lingam and finally Chidambaram, which is the space or the Akash Lingam. So the Sirvanamalai temple is one among the group of the Panchabhuta Stalams. It is also a very famous Padal Petra Stalam. We all know that there are 275 Padal Petra Stalams to which the Nayan Mars, especially the Devaram Trio, Upper Sundaran and Samandar went and they, and they sang their hearts out about God Shiva there. And uh, this happens to be one of the foremost of the Padal Petra Stalams to to which in the 7th century upper, that is Tirnavakarsar and Tirnyana Sambandar came and one century later in the 8th century uh, uh, Sambandar also, uh, Sundara Murthy Nayanar also came. So this is in, in sculpture, this is how upper Swami Tirnavakarsar is shown. In sculpture he is always shown holding that spade with which 
he did all his uh, kainkaryam for the temples this is not from this temple but just for you to identify upper whenever you go to a temple nyana sambandhar is mostly seen like this dancing also with symbols talam in his hands nyana sambandhar sundarmurthi nayanar is also seen in temples you have just generally uh, the nalvar upper sundarar sambandhar and manika vachikar but not many people are aware that manika vachikar was not one of the nayan mars but as great a shiva bhakta as uh, any any of the nayan mars and it is here in this temple that he composed the tiruvam pavai one of his greatest works it was in in this uh, particular temple that's how manika vachikar is generally shown so the inscriptions that tell us so much about this temple that is a padal petra stalam that is one of the panchabhuta stalams this tiruvannamalai needs some music to pep it up as she has already mentioned tiruvannamalai being a padal petra stalam we will be presenting a tevaram by appar and in this um, tevaram in the ragam keeravani appar describes annamalayar as the one who pervades the space who wears the crescent moon and who is who is as sweet as honey and uh, he also describes him as the one who consumed the poison and at the end um, he asks how can i survive if i forget annamalai annamalayar um arane adiyen marandui veno abdin last la solra so we will present this tevaram in the ragam keeravan வணி மதிஷூடியமைதனி வணி மதிஷூடியமைதனி வணி மதிஷூடியமைதனி வணி மதிஷூடியமைதனி வணி மதிஷூடியமைதனி தேனனி திருவண்ணாமலயனி வணனி மதிஷூடியமைதனி தேனனி திருவண்ணாமலயனி வணனி மதிஷூடியமைதனி தேனனி திருவண்ணாமலயனி வணனி மதிஷூடியமைதனி தேனனி திருவண்ணாமலயனி வணனி வீரனை விடமுண்டனி விண்ணவர் தீரனை திருவண்ணாமலயனை வீரனை விடமுண்டனி விண்ணவர் தீரனை திருவண்ணாமலயனை வீரனை விடமுண்டனை விண்ணவர் தீரனை திருவண்ணாமலயனை வீரனை விடமுண்டனை விண்ணவர் தீரனை திருவண்ணாமலயனை ஊரணி ஊரணி உணர்றார் புறமுழிதோரணி உண 
Sarar puramuri da orani, unarar puramuri da arani, ani marandu ivenu vana. ீதனிவனி மதிஷூடியமைந்தனிவனி so we all know that may when we go to a temple uh, there is a story behind the god and the goddess there and that's called the stala puranam i hate to call it a mythological story we do believe these things happened so we'll call it a traditional story the stala puranam of the arunachaleshwara temple is mentioned in these puranams linga kurma vayu and shiva puranam and uh, that is to do with we all know the story of shiva becoming a huge flame of light that is what the kartikeya deepam that we just saw is all about and vishnu went down in the form of varaha to find the feet of shiva he couldn't and brahma flew up in the form of a hamsa to find the head of shiva he couldn't but brahma took a petal of the ketiki flower the tarambu and came down saying that he had seen the head of shiva and since he lied and since the ketiki flower abetted that lie there are no temples for brahma to be found he is hardly ever in worship and the ketiki flower is not used in the worship of uh, god shiva so this is the story now any shiva temple in tamil nadu that we go to almost without exception will have on its walls at some place or the other but generally when we do a pradakshinam of the main sannidhi it will be there on the right at the back wall you will see the lingodbhava murti that is this form of shiva that you see where you can neither see the feet of shiva nor the tip of his head adi mudi kana and you will generally generally see sometimes not vishnu burrowing down in the form of a varaha and brahma f- uh, flying up in the form of a swan i am taking you this this stala puranam from the tiruvannamalai temple has become so very famous in iconography that is in the form of sculpture that it has become mandatory for almost all the temples it's there outside tamil nadu also but in the temples of tamil nadu i'm taking you to one of the most ancient uh, shiva temples of tamil nadu that is the kailasanatha temple in kanchipuram pallava period sandstone 8th century here not on the real wall wall of the main sanctum not in the garbagraha but on the walls outside you see this fantastic sculpture one of the most ancient of uh, shiva without the tip of his head being seen without his feet being seen and uh, vishnu uh, burrowing down and uh, brahma flying up this is how one of the earliest of the lingodbhava murtis is seen this uh, temple is said to have influenced a very old very ancient very historic temple in karnataka which is the one that you are seeing on screen and this is the virupaksha temple in pattadakkal of the chalukya dynasty same period 8th century also of sandstone here also you see a very weather worn but uh, lingodbhava murti here as though he is within the linga himself uh, itself tanjavur periya kovil do you want to know there is a beautiful lingodbhava murti over here like this and uh, if uh, the tanjavur temple has a lingodbhava can his son rajendra's temple be far behind here also there is a lingodbhava murti over here so 
the tiruvannamalai temple will not fall short of lingodbava murtis this being embedded in the stala puranam itself wherever you turn in the tiruvannamalai temple you will find a lingodbava like this one here you see vishnu as varaha and going up is brahma in the form of a hamsa itself the other very famous story connected with the tiruvannamalai stala puranam is how parvati once disturbed the penance of shiva and uh, he having become very angry with her and she having repented for what she did they both joined together as ardhanarishwara so that is also part of the famous stala puranam of the tiruvannamalai temple and i'm showing you one of the earliest ardhanarishwaras in stone ever in india and that is in our very own mamalapuram mahabalipuram on the walls of this ratha which is called the dharmaraja ratha today and uh, taking you once again to karnataka to a place called badami ancient vatapi capital of the chalukyan dynasty where there is a very very rare ardhanarishwara the point i'm trying to make is these uh, episodes from the stala puranam be ardhanarishwara or be lingodbhava having originated from tiruvannamalai have become so famous that they have become part and parcel of the sculptures in very many temples across uh, south india this is from gangai konda cholapuram of rajendra's time in chola period bronze images that is the utsava murtis you find ever so many ardhanarishwaras this is one of the 11th century probably of the time of rajendra chola himself this is in the uh, madras uh, museum amazing ardhanarishwaras so we know that the origin is from the tiruvannamalai temple something that we have become so common uh, we are seeing it everywhere that i think sometimes perhaps we don't trace the origin to where it should belong and that is to the temple premises of the annamalayar sanadi over to the musicians as we all know this kshetram is one of the panchabhuta kshetrams so namba muttaswami dikshitharoda kirtana paadama irukka mudiyadu arunachala natham in the ragam saranga is one of the panchabhuta krutis of uh, muttaswami dikshitar and uh, Lord Arunachala is worshipped as Agni, as fire. Jananath Kamalalaye, Darshanath Abhra Sadasi, Kashyam Tu Maranam Muktihi, Smaranath Arunachalaye. It is said that we can attain Mukti by just being born in Tiruvarur, having the darshan of Chidambaram, dying in Kashi, or just remembering Arunachala. அருணாச்சலநாதம் ஸ்மராமி இந்த ராகம் சாரங்கா அருணாச்சலநாதம் ஸ்மராமி அருணாச்சலநாதம் ஸ்மராமி அருணாச்சல நாதம் ஸ்மராமி அனீஷம் அபீத குச்சமேதம் ஷீயருணாச்சல நாதம் ஸ்மராமி அனீஷம் அபீத குச்சம ஸ்வமேதம் ஷீயருணாச்சல நாதம் ஸ்மராமி அனீஷம் அபீத குச்சம சமேதம் ஷீயருணாச்சல நாதம் ஸ்மராமி ஸ்மரணார் கைவல்ய பிரதச்சரணாரவிந்தம் கருணார் கைவல்ய பிரதச்சரணாரவிந்தம் 
स्मरण कैवल्य प्रदचरण रविंद तरुणादित्य कोटि संकाशचिदनंद स्मरण कैवल्य प्रदचरण रविंद तरुणादित्य कोटि संकाशचिदन करुणारसादिगंध करणागत सुरबृंदम करुणारसादिगंध शरणागत सुरबृंदम अरुणाचल स्मरामीशम अपीत कुचाबेतम श्री अरुणाचल अकृत तेजो मयलिंग अत्यदुत कर धृत सारंग अकृत तेजो मयलिंग अत्यदुत कर धृत सारंग अमेय मर्णाज भृंग आरूढ़ो तुंग वृष तुरंग अमेय मर्णाज भृंग आरूढ़ो भृंग वृष तुरंग विप्रोत्तम विशेषा तरंग वीर गुरु गुतार प्रसंग स्वप्रदीपमौली विदृत गंग स्वप्रकाश जित सोमाग्निपतंग अरुणाचल नाथ स्मरा विप्रोत्तम विशेषा तरंग वीर गुरु गुतार प्रसंग स्वप्रदीपमौली विदृत गंग स्वप्रकाश जित सोमाग्निपतंग अरुणाचल नाथ स्मरामीशम अपीत कुचाबेत श्री अरुणाचल नाथ स्मरामी we now go to a very famous person uh, so closely connected with uh, tirunelveli and that's arunagiri nathar uh, he lived in the 15th century in the height of the vijayanagara empire born in tirunelveli he led a very very wayward life and it is said that he kept asking his sister for money all the time and at, at one point of time she became so poor that she had no money to give him and she told him that she would have to sell herself if he asked for any more money and that was a complete turning point in the life of uh, arunagiri nath mm-hmm. and he uh, decided to turn to good ways but he was so heartbroken that he climbed up a gopuram in tiruvannamalai and was about to jump off it and you can all read the caption i'm, I'm sure all of you know tamil there is a muruga sandhi over there and just as he was about to jump off he was saved by lord buruha and that is when the famous tirupuhar started coming out from him so this is such a famous famous uh, temple because one of the reasons being of the association of uh, arunagirinathar and this is the muruga sanctum 
the Subramanya Swami who saved Arunagiri Nadhar and who put him in better ways and we are the richer for it because of that legacy that he is left behind, the Tirupurhar that we still sing, listen to, chant, etc. I am coming back to this layout of the Tirumannamalai temple. I am going to the east. This is the entrance through which we generally enter. There are three Gopurams on the east and I repeat two in the other three directions. The three on the east are extremely important, extremely historic. Each has a story to tell. So we come... Uh, uh, there's another thing that I would like to explain, not that you don't know about it. When we go from the outermost part of a large temple, as in the case of Tiruvannamalai, as we proceed inside, we are literally going in through history. So the last gopuram, last compound wall or the last prakaram that we see in any of these bigger temple complexes was probably the last to be constructed. So as we come in through the east, we are coming in through a very, very large Gopuram that is of the time of the Vijayanagar Empire. We will come to that subsequently in the course of this lecture. Then we pass through another much shorter Gopuram in comparison to the one we walked through. And then finally we are coming to an even shorter Gopuram. The reason for that is because the Vijayanagara rulers left behind the tallest Gopurams. So we are coming in through a very tall one. And then a shorter one belonging to the Hoysala times and then a very short one which is called the Kili Gopuram. And it is to the Kili Gopuram that we are now going because we are with the life of Arunagiri Nadar now and this is so closely connected with his life. Um, it is said that after he started composing the Tirupuhar, when the, the reign then was of a Vijayanagara king called Devaraya II. We are used to chanting the name of Krishna Devaraya. Before him, there were two Devarayas, Devaraya the first and Devaraya the second, both of the 15th century. And in the reign of Devaraya the second, who was also called Prauda Devaraya, it is said that Arunagiri Nadar lived and also another person called Sambanthanda. Now, this other person who was fairly jealous of uh, Arunagiri Nadar went and asked the king uh, a favor. He said, I will show you my Ishtadevam. Ask Arunagiri Nadar also to ask his Ishtadevam, Subramanya Swami, to manifest. So the king called both of them and asked them to do this. Samantandan called Kali his Ishtadevam, but she did not come. Now, as soon as Arunagiri Nadar asked Subramanya Swami to manifest himself, he did. But the entire audience, including the king, were blinded by the effulgence of this god. And as a result, Tambantandan wanting to put Arunagiri Nadar into a lot more trouble said, you, you have done this, now you have to cure us of our, the blindness that has been caused by the effulgence of Muruha. So go and get us the Parijata flower that can cure all of us. So Arunagiri Nadar decided to do so. But since he could not go in his own body to find a Parijata flower, um, he took to some yogic practices, left his own uh, body behind and entered into the body of a kili or a parrot, flew, found the Parijata flower and brought it back. And everybody was cured of their blindness. But meanwhile, when he had gone in search of the Parijata flower, his enemy Samantantan cremated his body that he had left behind. And so when he came back and he found that his body was not there and he couldn't shed the body of the parrot and enter his own body, he decided that this was the will of his Ishtadevam and can continued to remain as a parrot on this Gopuram and that is why it, is, it has got the name Kili Gopuram. This is one story. So this is the Kili Gopuram. It's a Chola era Gopuram. So let us understand that Arunagiri Nadar lived in the 15th century much if you are going into history also it is correct because this is Chola period and uh, Arunagiri Nadar lived only in the 15th century. So this is that Kili Gopuram, uh, historically very important, architecturally very beautiful and because of the connection of Arunagiri Nadar, it has this name till today. The shortest of the three Gopurams, the innermost of the three Gopurams from the eastern side. So to the musicians. So our இப்போ சொன்ன மாதிரி அந்த கிளி கோ கிளி கோபுரம்க்கு என்ன ஸ்டோரி அவ சொன்னாலோ அதுக்கு அதோட கான்டெக்ஸ்ட்ல ஒரு திருப்புகழ் இருக்கு அட அதல சேடனாராட அப்படின்னு ஒரு திருப்புகழ் விச் இஸ் அ ராகமாலிகா 
and there is also another very famous tirupugal yerumayil yeri so we would like to present both the tirupugals now we will start with the uh, yerumayil yeri in the ragam anand anand bhairavi மயில் ஏறி விளையாட்டு முகம் ஒன்றே ஈஷனுடன் ஞான மொழி பேசு முகம் ஒன்றே ஏறு மயில் ஏறி விளையாட்டு முகம் ஒன்றே ஈஷனுடன் ஞான மொழி பேசு முகம் ஒன்றே கூறுமடியார்கள் வினை தீர்த்த முகம் ஒன்றே குன்றுருவ வேல் வாங்கி நின்ற முகம் ஒன்றே கூறுமடியார்கள் வினை தீர்த்த முகம் ஒன்றே குன்றுருவ வேல் வாங்கி நின்ற முகம் ஒன்றே கூறுமடியார்கள் வினை தீர்த்த முகம் ஒன்றே குன்றுருவ வேல் வாங்கி நின்ற முகம் ஒன்றே மாறுபடு சூரரை வரை த முகம் ஒன்றே வள்ளியை மனம் புனர வந்த முகம் ஒன்றே மாறுபடு சூரரை வதை த முகம் ஒன்றே வள்ளியை மனம் புனர வந்த முகம் ஒன்றே ஆறு முகமான பொருள் நீயருள் வேண்டும் ஆதியருணாச்சலமர்ந்த பெருமாளே ஆறு முகமான பொருள் நீயருள் வேண்டும் ஆதியருணாச்சலமர்ந்த பெருமாளே ஏருமையில் ஏறி விளையாடு முகம் ஒன்றே ஈசனுடன் ஞான மொழி பேசு முகம் ஒன்றே ஏருமையில் ஏறி விளையாடு முகம் ஒன்றே ஈசனுடன் ஞான மொழி பேசு முகம் ஒன்றே கூறுமடியார்கள் வினை தீர்த்த முகம் ஒன்றே குன்றுருபவேல் வாங்கி நின்ற முகம் ஒன்றே கூறுமடியார்கள் வினை தீர்த்த முகம் ஒன்றே குன்றுருபவேல் வாங்கி நின்ற முகம் ஒன்றே மாறுபடு சூரரை வதை த முகம் ஒன்றே வள்ளியை மனம் புனர வந்த முகம் ஒன்றே மாறுபடு சூரரை வதை த முகம் ஒன்றே வள்ளியை மனம் புனர வந்த முகம் ஒன்றே ஆறு முகமான பொருள் அருளல் வேண்டும் ஆதியருணாச்சலம் அமர்ந்த பெருமாளே ஆறு முகமான பொருள் அருளல் வேண்டும் ஆதியருணாச்சலம் அமர்ந்த பெருமாளே ஆதியருணாச்சலம் அமர்ந்த பெருமாளே தி அதர் ராகபாலிகா திருப்புகள் அது சந்த சந்த தாளத்தில் இருக்கு அது ஒரு ரூபகம் அண்ட் ஒரு கண்ட சாப்பு மாற்றி வரும் கல்யாணி ஆனந்த பைரவி சாமா அண்ட் சுருட்டியில் அமைஞ்சிருக்கு அகல சேடனாராட அகில மேரு மீராட அதல சேடனாராட அகில மேரு மீதாட அபின காளி தானாட அலவோட அதல சேடனாராட அகில மேரு மீதாட அபின காளி தானாட அவளோட 
ಹರಿ ರವಿ ಶಿವಾಡು ವಿಜಯಲೇರಿ ಬಾರಾಡ ಹರಿ ರವಿ ಶಿವಾಡು ವಿಜಯಲೇರಿ ಬಾರಾಡ ಅರ್ಘ ಭೂತ ವೇದಾಳಂ ಅವಯ ರವಿ ಶಿವಾಡು ವಿಡಯಲೇರಿ ವಾರಾಡ ಅರ್ಘ ಭೂತ ವೇದಾಳಂ ಅವಯ ಮಧುರ ವಾಣಿ ತಾನಾಡ ಮಲರಿ ವೇದನಾರಾಡ ಮರುಭುವಾಡ ಮದಿಯಾಡ ಮಧುರ ವಾಣಿ ತಾನಾಡ ಮಲರಿ ವೇದನಾರಾಡ ಮರುಭುವಾಡ ಮದಿಯಾಡ ವನಜ ಮಾಮಿಯಾರಾಡ ನಿಲಯ ಮಾಮನಾರಾಡ ವನಜ ಮಾಮಿಯಾರಾಡ ನಿಲಯ ಮಾಮನಾರಾಡ ಮೈಲು ಮಾಡಿ ನೀಡಿ ಮೈಲು ಮಾಡಿ ನೀಡಿ ಮೈಲು ಮಾಡಿ ನೀಡಿ ಬರವೇಣು ವನಜ ಮಾಮಿಯಾರಾಡ ನದಿಯ ಮಾಮನಾರಾಡ ಮೈಲು ಮಾಡಿ ನೀಡಿ ಬರವೇಣು ಗದಿ ಬಿಡಾದ ತೋಳ್ವಿ ಮನ್ ಎದಿರ್ಕೊಳ್ವಾಳಿ ನೀಡ ಗದಿ ಬಿಡಾದ ತೋಳ್ವಿ ಮನ್ ಎದಿರ್ಕೊಳ್ವಾಳಿ ನೀಡ ಕರ್ದಳಾರ್ಗಳ್ ಮಾಸೇನಿ ಪೊಡಿಯ ಗದಿ ಬಿಡಾದ ತೋಳ್ವಿ ಮನ್ ಎದಿರ್ಕೊಳ್ವಾಳಿ ನೀಡ ಕರ್ದಲಾರ್ಗಳ್ ಮಾಸೇನಿ ಪೊಡಿಯ ಕದರ್ ಕಾಳಿ ಪೋಮಿಲ ವಿಜಯ ನೇರ್ ತೇರ್ ಮೀದ ಕದರ್ ಕಾಳಿ ಪೋಮಿಲ ವಿಜಯ ನೇರ್ ತೇರ್ ಮೀದ ಕನಕ ವೇದ ಕೋಡೂಡಿ ಕನಕ ವೇದ ಕೋಡೂಡಿ ಅಲಿ ಮೋರು ಕನಕ ವೇದ ಕೋಡೂಡಿ ಅಲಿ ಮೋದು ಉದದಿ ಮೀದಿಲೇಷಾಯು ಉಲಗ ಮೂಡ್ ಶೀರ್ ಪಾಡ ಉದದಿ ಮೀದಿಲೇಷಾಯು ಉಲಗ ಮೂಡ್ ಶೀರ್ ಪಾಡ ಉವನ ಮೂರ್ದಿ ಮಾಮಾಯನ್ ಮರ್ಗೋನೆ ಉದದಿ ಮೀದಿಲೇಷಾಯು ಉಲಗ ಮೂಡ್ ಶೀರ್ ಪಾಡ ಉವನ ಮೂರ್ದಿ ಮಾಮಾಯನ್ ಮರ್ಗೋನೆ ಉದಯ ದಾಮ ಮಾರ್ವಾನ ಪ್ರಭುಡ ದೇವ ಮಾರಾಜನ್ ಉದಯ ದಾಮ ಮಾರ್ವಾನ ಪ್ರಭುಡ ದೇವ ಮಾರಾಜನ್ ಉಳಮು ಮಾಡವಾಳ್ ದೇವರ್ ಪೆರ್ ಮಾರೆ ಉದಯ ದಾಮ ಮಾರ್ವಾನ ಪ್ರಭುಡ ದೇವ ಮಾರಾಜನ್ ಉಳಮು ಮಾಡವಾಳ್ ದೇವರ್ ಪೆರ್ ಮಾಲೆ ಪೆರ್ ಮಾಲೆ
ke so we go into the temple premises and uh, we are now looking at the i do i don't have a photograph to show you uh, uh, sometimes you know we get confused between what a vimanam is and what a gopuram is we use these terms very randomly which we shouldn't uh, this is a window and that's a door we don't make uh, we don't get confused because of this now a vimanam is the place where the gods reside the main deity or any of the subsidiary deities vimanam is also the name given to the topmost part the dome like structure of the main sanctum any sanctum the garbhagriha so the vimanam of the tiruvannamalai temple again i apologize i don't have a photograph to show you they are very strict about photography inside this temple complex but um, uh, we don't know when this particular one came to be built but there is a very interesting inscription not in this temple but elsewhere connected with a lesser known ruler uh, of tamil nadu one of the chieftains of a of, of a dynasty called the banas again those of you who have read kalki's ponniyan shelvan will know that that hero banar kula the veeran bandiya revan banar kulam is the bana family and the banas were the feudatories of many of the ruling dynasties of tamil nadu especially the cholas so there was one particular king and his title was interesting pon parappina pon gold parappina he spread it that is he turned this vimanam into gold so that was a work of a of a lesser known uh, chieftain and an unknown poet of a sanskrit inscription who praises this uh, bana chieftain uh, says that this baneshwara this ishwara of the banas this king of the banas took away the crown of the pandyas three times and he presented only one crown to the chola king of whom he was a feudatory he fought on behalf of the cholas defeated the pandyas took three of their crowns only one did he give to the chola king what did he do the other two he crowned the vimanam of the temple with that gold so that he was called pon parapina and that was a title that he was given and another sanskrit verse again by this unknown poet says this bana chief covered arunadri arunadri is arunachala with gold and the sun mistook it for mount meru the sun that was going up said oh, this must be mount meru actually he copied this inscription i know from one another one in the srirangam temple where another king called jatavarman sundara pandya had covered it with uh, gold <laughs> it's taken from there but never mind this is interesting enough that's about it so now we are going in from the east and we are going through the rajagopuram the one that i told you is the eastern most outermost mm, one one of the tallest temple towers of uh, tamil nadu is is this one among among those that are old uh, the vella gopuram in srirangam is very tall those of the vardaraja perumal temple and ekambara temple are very tall uh, the meenakshi temple gopurams are subsequent to this of course they are uh, of a beauty all their own but the height of this one is 217 feet it goes up into 11 uh, stories the unfortunate part is we don't realize the grandeur of this gopuram from the outside because of this mantapam that is there if you want to see the beauty of this gopuram you have to go into the temple and then look back at that east gopuram which we seldom do because we are more worried about what we are going to ask uh, arunachaleshwara and apitu kuchamban whether they will give it to us in a hurry or whether they are going to take their own time so those thoughts occupy our head but this is really really one of the grandest gopurams uh, over here built in the reign of shri krishna devaraya between 1509 and 1529 but only partially apparently uh, it was not completed in his time and then when was it completed in the uh, 16th century by a chieftain of tanjavur called sevappa nayak so the nayaks were the governors of the vijayanagara rulers in tamil nadu you had them in madurai you had them in tanjavur you had them in sinji vellur various other places the tanjavur nayaks were among the better known nayaks and the sevappa nayaka chevappa nayaka who completed this gopuram which was begun by krishna devaraya it was actually he started off 
and had a very humble position. He was the Vetlapakatuki, the beetle bearer of Achutaraya, who was the younger brother, half brother, and successor of Sri Krishnadevaraya. But uh, he was so faithful to his king. See, if you have to carry the Vetlapaka behind the king all the time, then you will be privy to his all his uh, conversations, all the Rajatantram that he did. You had to have a very, very faithful person to be coming behind you all the time, everywhere. Sevapa Nayak uh, Sevapa proved to be so very loyal to his king that he got him married to his sister-in-law, his queen's sister, and gave him Tanjavur as dowry. So he came to settle down here and he completed, uh, Thiruvannamalai is not too far from Tanjavur in any case, very, very much within his jurisdiction and he uh, completed this very, very grand, grand uh, Gopuram. And there is an interesting inscription found on this Gopuram which is bilingual, meaning it is half in Sanskritam and half in uh, Tamil and it contains verses by a scholar named uh, Srinivasa Dikshita in praise of the Gopuram of 11 stories built at Sonachala, that is another name of uh, Thiruvannamalai, by Chinna Seva, that is Seva Panayaka, at the request of two tapaswins, uh, Shivanesha and Lokanatha. These two people had requested Seva Panayaka and he uh, completed it. That inscription is still to be found on the Gopuram, or, or on this uh, Gopuram till today. Now, um, historians are very careful. They generally don't take any one source. Mm, as the overall truth, even though inscriptions are really very, very authentic sources. There is another work of the Nayak times. Uh, you may have all heard of a very great scholar called Govinda Dikshita, who lived in the time of the Nayaks. Now, his son uh, mentions in his work that this Gopura was completed by Seva Nayaka. So, we have two very good pieces of eviden evidence to show who built this. Really, really completely of the Vijayanagara style of architecture, grand, grand Gopuram. Let's just go through. Again, when we, when we go to a temple, it is also unfortunate that we don't have time to stand and stare. I also agree with you, we have time constraints. So let's do it with the help of these photographs. Ravana shaking Mount Kailash is over here. Bhikshatana form of Shiva, when he had taken uh, off the fifth head of Brahma and it stuck to his hand and he was cursed. So he wandered about like a mendicant as a, as a bhikshu. This is the bhikshatana form of Shiva. He is said to have gone through Dharukavana, a forest, where the rishis were performing penance in order to see him. But he walks in like that and the rishi patnis, the wives of the rishis are so enamored of him. And uh, uh, you can see one rishi patni right at the back uh, over there uh, where I am pointing. And bhikshatana murti is generally seen accompanied by a Shiva Gana whom we see here and also with a deer uh, taking some leaves from the hand of Shiva. Almost in every Shiva temple in Tamil Nadu can you, can you see him. Uh, you have Shiva as Trupurantaka over here holding the bow and arrow. Uh, so this is how the Gopuram goes. Dwarapalakas are there. And uh, we have Veerabhadra Swami. More about Veerabhadra Swami later. Uh, this is actually how the Utsava Murti of uh, the, this temple looks. Shiva and Parvati with the baby Skanda. This is called the famous Soma Skanda Murti. Gaja Samhara Murti where uh, Shiva ripped open an elephant who was actually an Asura and danced upon his head. Subramanya Swami is here. Devotees are here. Arumukhan Shanmukha is also here on this Gopuram, as is Brahma. Uh, sometimes we mistake Brahma for Shanmukha and Shanmukha for Brahma, but you have to look at the Vahana behind them. Some Rishis are also there. Very many uh, typical Vijayanagara sculptures. Oh, this temple has a, a sculpt, um, Sandhidi for Venugopala Swami also. Now, as you are entering this Gopuram and you've seen all these sculptures on the base of the wall, as you go further inside, on the left and on the right, you will see beautiful ladies like this, whom you all know are goddesses Ganga and Yamuna. So we are virtually, now we are used to this word virtual, we are virtually walking through the waters of the Ganga and Yamuna over here, cleansing ourselves physically and, and had I said this uh, two years ago, nobody would have caught on. So now, we, through the waters of the Ganga and Yamuna, more mental cleansing than physical cleansing and uh, see Ganga holds a creeper, a lata 
and that latha goes up in coils like that this is a very very vijayanagara thing so in each of those coils you have a figure and this is veerabhadra swami over here a multi armed veerabhadra was that form of shiva according to some puranas who came out of the pores of his body and according to other puranas he leapt out from his jata uh, when he saw that his wife dakshayani had committed sati in the yaga of her father daksha so veerabhadra is a very ferocious god and you see many temples for veerabhadra swami in the vijayanagara times and sculptures of this god veerabhadra in the nayak times if you go to the meenakshi temple in madurai you see very many number of veerabhadras and you generally recognize veerabhadra i'm sorry this is not very clear but this is daksha a uh, father of dakshayani with a head of a uh, goat he was killed and then he was brought back to life and then a little above you see indra if you want to learn iconography go to a vijayanagara gopuram look at ganga and yamuna and look at all the circular circular creepers going go go to our own kapaleshwar kovil whose east gopuram has been based on vijayanagara nayak period gopuram you you will learn everything about hinduism and this here Uh, appears to be you can't see it there is it mm -hmm. okay this appears to be narasimha it's not this is sharabha the very very ferocious form of shiva again and the person who is the god who is on his lap here crying for mercy is narasimha so the sharabha form is said to have been taken by shiva in order to quell the ferocity of uh, narasimha who could not be pacified either by lakshmi or by prahlada this is from the shaivite side you have garuda also it keeps going up and up and up on the other side um, above yamuna here you have nrita ganesha ganesha dancing and then you have this this is no god but then i would equate it to any deity any deity this is the emblem of the vijayanagara empire and if you are here if i am here if the musicians are here if you are celebrating our culture if you are celebrating this temple it is because of the vijayanagara kings and their people and their armies who did so much for our south india if the vindhyas have stood as a barrier not to let in many invasions from the north to the south even the, what the vindhyas could not do vijayanagara did for more than 300 years and this is the symbol they said like varaha as you see varaha here they protected as varaha protected bhuma devi they protected south india how with the help of the sword the help of their arms for how long that is not here today as long as surya and chandra exist and usually in their emblem you find surya and chandra that's not there but they have left their imprint on this uh, gopuram and we fail to see such things so as we go in, in you come out of this gopuram and uh, you are turning around and looking at it from the inside you see these sculptures Uh, generally when shiva leans on the nandi he is uh, called rishabhantika with generally with one hand he'll be very gracefully leaning on nandi this kind of shiva you will hardly see he is literally clambering on to the nandi he is getting on to it this rishabha rudha nandi garuda rudha vishnu you will see with vishnu sometimes placing one foot on garuda and getting up this is very rare it's there on the east to gopuram bikshatana again makes an appearance lingodbhava i have shown it to you from another place in this temple he appears here again brahma i'll keep uh, going this is shiva leaning on the nandi this is rishabhantika shiva ganas they are here they are there they are everywhere nandi himself and this is vishnu riding on garuda over here small small sculptures here and there but extremely extremely beautiful the marriage of shiva and parvati as kalyana sundara uh, again then the one of the most eye catching um, one of the most important features of this outermost eastern vijayanagara nayak period gopuram are these sculptures let's not hurry through them let us see what great uh, sculptors they had in the vijayanagara period these are the 108 karanas the karana poses that chidambaram is so famous for that the tanjavur temple is so famous for that the sharangapani temple in kumbakonam is also famous for is here in tiruvannamalai but this has not been highlighted by many people it's it's the the karanas uh, let me just take you through the background of the karanas they are there in many pallava period temples but random ones it was only in the time of rajaraja chola that 
all the karanas which are the dance movements given in the natya shastra of bharata muni were put in a same order as given in the natya shastra in their inner prakara of the upper story of the vimanam not the gopuram the vimanam of the tanjavur temple that was in the 11th century subsequently in the 12th century on the eastern and western gopurams gopurams of the chidambaram temple the cholas put their karanas 108 each on the west gopuram and on the east gopuram the quality of the east and west gopuram of the chidambaram temple karanas is that they are accompanied by the label verses that are there in bharata's natya shastra so stala pushpa putta that karana has to be shown that appropriate verse from the natya shastra is also inscribed there it is only on the west and the east gopurams the south and the north gopurams of chidambaram also have the karana sculptures without the accompanying labels in the shangapani temple also they are there here in the east gopuram of the tirunelveli temple look at that all the karanas are there each and every one they may i i have to add may not have the vigor of the chola period sculptures nevertheless a great great effort has been made here to present the karanas so next next time we walk in through the east gopuram let us notice these sculptures okay each of them you will also learn about the dress the ornaments so many things i'm not a dancer but i'm a historian we can learn many many things from each of these sculptures as we walk in why don't we just stop for a moment and look up this is at a great height we are looking at a full blown lotus we are looking at goddess gajay lakshmi over here yeah how did they carve it up there or did they carve it and they lifted that stone up there we'll not know gajay lakshmi is there looking down at she showering everything on us but we are there walking in and then there is a painting also vijayanagara period painting night period painting that we have right on top uh, a row of shivaganas looks at us as we pass through this uh, gopuram just uh, showing you the chidambaram north gopuram for a second which was also built in the time of krishna devaraya north gopuram and this also has some karana sculptures same period tirunelveli east gopuram north gopuram of uh, chidambaram all right so i just hurry through this and uh, going to the kailasanatha temple once again one of the earliest stone temples of tamil nadu you have karana sculptures there as well like this out of sandstone unfortunately very badly destroyed over to the musicians manika vachagar has composed several hymns of highly philosoph- philosophical meanings out of which tiruvampavai is one is a, is famous and it is it is sung during the margari month This particular Tiruvampave that we will be presenting now is in the Ragam Purvi Kalyani is on Tiruvannamale um though this place is associated with fire like she said there are a lot of uh, uh tanks all around the um campus and uh, this Tiruvampave describes a group of women splash water on top of each other and Manika Vachagar says oh the one with red flamed body covered in ash the beloved of the slim wasted black coal eyed beautiful one protect us ceaselessly muyar tadam poi gai puk mugaren muyar tadam ಪುಕ್ ಮುಗರ ಕೈಯಾರ್ ಕುಡೇದ ಕುಡೇದ ಕಡಲ್ ಪಾದಿ ಮುಯಾರ್ ತಡ ಪುಕ್ ಮುಗರ ಕೈಯಾರ್ ಕುಡೇದ ಕುಡೇದು ಕಡಲ್ ಪಾದಿ ಅಯ್ಯ ವಳಿ ಅಡಿಯೋ 
வாழ்ந்தோம் காணாரழல் போலையாவழி அடியோம் வாழ்ந்தோம் காணாரழல் போலையாவழி அடியோம் வாழ்ந்தோம் காணாரழல் போல் செய்ய செய்யாவெண்ணீராடி செல்வ சீர் மருங்குள் மையார் தடங் கண் மடந்தை மண வாழ மையார் தடங் கண் மடந்தை மண வாழ ஐயா நீ ஆட்கொண்டும் வேளையாட்டின் மையார் தடங் கண் மடந்தை மண வாழ ஐயா நீ ஆட்கொண்டும் வேளையாட்டின் ஒய்வார்கள் ஒய்யும் வகை எல்லாம் ஒய்தோழிந்தோ ஒய்வார்கள் ஒய்யும் வகை எல்லாம் ஒய்தோழிந்தோ ஒய்வார்கள் ஒய்யும் வகை எல்லாம் ஒய்தோழிந்தோ we proceed from this uh, big gopuram and we go in and then we come to another gopuram well coming in through this we are going to this next gopuram and that is connected with a king called veera vallala the third what do they teach us in schools nothing on on history i'm afraid local history is very important go from local history to your state history state state history to in the case of south india south indian history then go to national history and then go to international history no none of this happens we just learn about some dynasties and we end up hating this subject unless we have a couple of good teachers like my teacher who i see sitting over there uh, otherwise it's all gone so uh, here veera vallala the third was a king of the hoysala dynasty and the hoysalas were here in the karnataka area i'm afraid i haven't been able to get a better map for you but they were ruling mainly over south karnataka and at one point over uh, parts of northern tamil nadu as well so there was a king called veera someshwara in the 13th century and uh, he had conquered many parts of northern tamil nadu in fact you know you all know of the name samayapuram it was actually somanathapuram after veera someshwara which has become samayapuram and uh, there was a temple there called the poisaleshwara temple her changes to pa in tamil nadu so they were called the poisaleshwaras and his second his first son uh, took care of the karnataka part of his empire his name was veera narsimha and the second son veera ramanatha took uh, care of the southern part that is a tamil nadu part the veera narsimha defeated his brother and the tamil nadu part of it also came under him 
we must remember that the capital of the hoysalas was a place called dwara samudra today's halebid in karnataka very famous place now veeravallala was ruling over there look at his date 1292 to 1342 ad quite a long reign and he was very old when he died it is said he was almost 80 when he died now veeravallala uh, lived through very turbulent times as did his counterpart in andhra pradesh the kakatiya king prataparudra as did the pandya kings in south india uh, madurai area the cholas had gone by then when in the early part of the 14th century in 1310 1311 malik afur's invasion came when alauddin khilji was ruling from delhi you know all this gold that they put on the sarunadri and in chidambaram and in shirangam that glint caught the eye of alauddin khilji and here there were two petty pandian kings uh, fighting amongst themselves and one of them went and called uh, uh, for help from alauddin khilji so he sent his very brave army general malik afur and that was almost to the end of south india so when he came this veera vallala was in dwara samudra in halebid he had to buy peace but anyway dwara samudra was destroyed by the time he could recoup and try to make his kingdom what it was in the past he couldn't much of it had gone Muhammad bin Tughlaq came in 1323 so what was left was also gone so he had to abandon Dwara Samudra this Veeravallala Ballala and he came and made Tiruvannamalai his capital that was his capital city he had to fight very many challenges here Veeravallala had to including a sultan of Madurai who was giving him a lot of uh, trouble nevertheless having made Tiruvannamalai his capital he decided to build a gopuram that is today famously known as the ballala gopuram that is the second gopuram from the east after you come in through the big one the big tall gopuram this is ballala gopuram and as you go through on the right you will see a sculpture of veera ballala do we stop to stare we don't we have to again like we did to the vijayanagara rulers to this man whose name is hardly there in the textbooks of history how hard he tried to keep south india together this man really in his old age also he tried but uh, we all have egos and this king also had an ego and after he had built this gopuram i think uh, he seems to have thought a lot of himself so out of the temple comes the procession uh, passing through the kili gopuram should pass through the vallala gopuram Uh, arunachaleshwara napita kuchambal they stop the procession is not going in through the vallala gopuram because it was built of ego so even today when they come out in procession they'll go through the kili gopuram go around the vallala gopuram there is a small vashal called the titti vashal they go through that then they will go through krishnaraya devaraya's gopuram this gopuram is avoided for that one reason he built it out of his ego so that however Vallala was such a great devotee of Arunachaleshwara and Vallala Veera Vallala did not have children it is said that Arunachaleshwara is said to have manifested himself as as his son and then disappeared and when Veera Vallala died Arunachaleshwara performed his last rites and even today during one of the very many utsavams I'll read out the names of the utsavams to you Arunachaleshwara on that particular tithi goes to the place a uh, little further away from the temple where the palace of veera vallala stood performs the rites and then comes back so this is a tradition that is followed in this temple and to this uh, monarch here we must bow our heads so ego is not liked devotion is carried on through these very, very many centuries so this is where the sculpture of veera vallala is as you pass through the uh, vallala gopuram and then we go to the south uh, gopuram these are the two south gopurams and again these were also the tall one oh, sorry the inner one was constructed by the same king veera vallala gopuram veera vallala and the outer one which is called the tirumanjana gopuram was by krishna devaraya we come to the inner west gopuram this one here let me zoom this was also all the small ones were veera vallala and the outer one Uh, the base was constructed in the time of krishna devaraya and later the top portion the north gopuram the inner one uh, over here again veera vallala in the 14th century and the outer one which is called the bakta uh, amini amal gopuram base was constructed by krishna devaraya 
and he said a sanyasini amani amar with the, all the money that she had got as donation from various people completed the tall part of this gopuram so this is a each gopuram here in tirunavalai as in many other temples also has a history but when we look at it from uh, arunachalesh uh, uh, the hill it looks like this and we don't know how much work how much devotion everything has gone into the construction of these gopurams so there are very many this is how it looks from each of the directions and almost all the south north and west gopurams the tall ones and the short ones are uniform in height and in size it is the three ones the three on the uh, east side the one by krishna devaraya and then one by vallala and the kili gopuram that are different so many designs uh, that are here we are showing you many things that are copied by weavers and they get integrated into our saree pallus and our borders are all there on these gopurams all right so i'm showing you random sculptures darpana sundari a lady looking at her uh, herself in a mirror many more gangas and yamunas from various other gopurams that you see here belonging to the vijayanagara times more veerabhadra swamis more devoted cows more uh, uma maheshwara shiva parvati elephant worshiping linga as in tirvanaika a standing narsimha very rare to see a stanaka narsimha more uh, sculptures of karanas in various of the other goparas as well and go through this a little fast ah this is a rare sculpture you see krishna here but with shankha chakra and multiple arms this is very typically vijayanagar you will not see a krishna you will see a krishna holding a namanita butter ball you will see dancing krishna venu gopala so many other krishnas you will see but a krishna like this with shankha chakra multiple arms and holding a flute Uh, generally referred to as madana gopala is very vijayanagar so shall we step into vijayanagara for a moment hampi and see how this sculpture so we go to the hazara rama temple uh, sa rama chandra temple in the heart of hampi we go into that we see lots of krishna sculptures it's a rama temple so bala krishna is here kaliga natana krishna when he was slightly older navanita krishna now you see krishna here all this is very vijayanagar with adisesha on top showing him to be narayana himself now you have chaturbhuja krishna four arms holding the shankha chakra you see four arms with shankha chakra and uh, as venu gopala with rukmini and satyabhama and the cows finally you see eight armed vishnu with shankha chakra various other weapons venu gopala rukmini satyabhama and the cows that this is the ultimate uh, madana gopala that you see and everyone tells you to see an ashtabhuja vishnu an eight arm vishnu you have to go all the way to cambodia you can go if you want but he is also here in hampi and other places so anyway uh, the, these are all, all the gopurams i am showing it to you in uh, close up west gopuram then we go to the north gopuram like this very uniform are they so many sculptures waiting for us to see but we hardly do not i i realize that i'm showing lots of uh, photographs if see this lady with a pleated skirt and you can see her wearing the typical dance costume as you see today if you go to any of the vijayanagara period gopurams uh, here in various other places in hampi also you'll see the same thing so this is all about learning about attire etc etc completely vijayanagar are these bigger gopurams and all this do you see sometimes you need a zoom camera you have dakshina murti also here and unfortunately not in a very good condition this is mekapada murti uh, shiva on one leg more tripurantakas shiva with a bow and arrow many 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 sculptures do you see over here more gangas more yamunas we have to look to the left to the right uh, i showed you an ekapada murti now i'm showing you an ekapada trimurti shiva here brahma on this side vishnu on that side and we come to the ayirangal mantapam again built in the reign of uh, the vijayanagara rulers 
you see more festivals had happened more people were crowding around the temples there were many many more utsavams many more things happening at the temple premises so these thousand pillared halls were needed it's there in chidambaram it's there in srirangam it's there all over and you see everything that happened in the vijayanagara times on the walls on the base everything of you have wrestlers very vijayanagara dancers kolatam dancers very vijayanagar everything that you want to see is there now very close to this uh, ayirangal mantapam you have the patala lingeshwara shrine which is where ramana maharshi is said to have spent many many years in deep meditation it is also said that when the vijayanagara rulers wanted to build this ayirangal mantapam they found this uh, sannadhi uh, beneath the ground with a shivalinga and uh, it had been occupied by a siddha purusha we know that tirumala malai is a place for siddha purushas who had been performing tapas there for many years later much later of course ramana maharshi came and he perf- he he spent a long time over there so that is to do with the ayirangal mantapam huge mantapam it is with many many sculptures ganga yamuna etc 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 this is one of the biggest ayirangal mantapams in tamil nadu i said said very uh, vijayanagar and this is from chidambaram very very similar is it same kind of elephant sculptures everything this is from srirangam again similar they are all of the vijayanagara times nalukal mantapam you have any number in uh, tirunamalai again all of them of the vijayanagara or later period many sculptures that we can identify kali is here uh, krishna having stolen the clothes of the ro- uh, gopis is here ganesha is here pikshatana murti is here you want to know your shaivait iconography go to tirunamalai dakshina murti is again over here vishnu is also here yoga narsimha is here uh, pikshatana murti once again very many tanks the main one is called the shiva ganga tank spotlessly clean because there's a barricading uh, brahma teertham is also over here very many teethams in the, this how many festivals do you want this is a place of utter tranquility of majesty etc i just read out some of the main uh, festivals 10 day festivals generally you have only one in every temple that is the brahmotsava look at the number of 10 day plus many days festivals that you have there are four 10 day festivals chitra utsavam 10 days ani brahmotsavam 10 days ஆடிபூரம் பிரம்மோத்சவம் டென் டேஸ் கந்த சஷ்டி உத்சவம் சிக்ஸ் டேஸ் கார்த்திகை தீப பிரம்மோத்சவம் த ஃபேமஸ் ஒன் செவன்டீன் டேஸ் உத்தராயண புண்ணியகால பிரம்மோத்சவம் டென் டேஸ் பங்குனி உத்தரம் திருக்கல்யாண உத்சவம் சிக்ஸ் டேஸ் அண்ட் ஃபார் அப்பீத்த குச்சாம்பால் டஸ் அ டென் டே ஃபெஸ்டிவல் இன் ஆடி திஸ் டெம்பிள் இஸ் ஜஸ்ட் சாக் ஃபுல் ஆஃப் ஃபெஸ்டிவல்ஸ் தீஸ் ஆர் சம் ஆஃப் த தேர்ஸ் சம் அ ஃபியூ த டைம் ஷோயிங் யூ ஓவர் ஹியர் பச்சேப்ப Uh, mudaliyar gave so much of a donation uh, to this uh, temple as have kings and army generals and common uh, people like us muttu swami dikshitur uh, came over here this was arunagiri arunagiri nathar's place the nayan mars the three of them came over here manika vachakar composed over here with the hill in the background the sprawling 25 acre multi prakaram nain gopuram temple with arunachaleshwara in the center and apita kuchambal by his side galaxy of uh, other deities ayiram from a four pillared mandapam to an ayiram kal mandapam tiruvannamalai has it all i mean we can't take it in in one visit we can't take it in in several visits we can't take it in in one lifetime i think you need several lifetimes to be able to digest the glory of this temple Uh, glory is beyond words the spoken word and the written word it's something beyond more than anything else there is a mysticism in uh, tiruvannamalai that i don't think any of us can fathom the hill is mystic the temple is mystic the fits festivals we understand the rituals we try to all this we understand but that mysticism of this god i think is something uh, beyond our understanding our comprehension and uh, may we visit this temple many many times may we try to understand it may we also try to as a student of history imbibe some of that history history is not an exclusive subject it's intertwined with religion with festivals with 
each of these kings have given their hearts and all the people who have contributed the mason who carried the smallest stone or the plaster to fix two bricks has given his heart to the temple so may we open our eyes and look around the prakarams the gopurams any gopuram look up there is gaje lakshmi or somebody wanting to bless you but you must look up for the blessing to come so let us please spend some time in our temples and imbibe everything that our ancestors have given us thank you very very much we would like to conclude with apita kuchamba stavam by shri appaya dikshitar it consists of eight verses and legend has it that once appaya dikshitar had gone to tiruvannamalai for the darshanam of uh, arunachaleshwara and apita kuchamba there he falls sick avarku romba high fever vandudrudu and at that time he composes this apita kuchamba stavam and prays to the goddess apita kuchamba to relieve him of this fever and then he becomes all right it is said that even today if a devotee can relieve himself from fever he has to receive sorry recite apita kuchamba stavam this has been very beautifully tuned by vidwan shri rk shri ram kumar we have him with us today in the audience he has uh, tuned this apita kuchamba stavam in the ragas ananda bhairavi sahana chandra jyoti brindavani lalita naganandini khamas and bhairavam आनंद सिंधु लहरी ममृता शुमौले आसे विना ममृत निर्मित वर्ती मक्षो आनंद सिंधु लहरी ममृता शुमौले आसे विना ममृत निर्मित वर्ती मक्षो आनंद वल्ली वितते अमृतार्द्रगुत अंबस्मराम्यहमीतकुचे वुस्ते आनंदवल्लीतेमृतागुच्छ अंबस्मराम्यहमीतकुचे वुस्ते अंबस्मराम्यहमीतकुचे वुस्ते निर्निद्रको कनद कोमल नित्यं सुधा निकर वर्षि पदम तदीय निर्निद्रको कनद कोमल नित्यं सुधा निकर वर्षि पदम तदीय मूर्छाकज्वर रोज ममता पीत मूर्ति क्षण सकृदीतकुचे निधे मूर्झाकज्वर रोज ममता पीत मूर्ति क्षण सकृदीतकुचे निधे शीतांशुकोटिशुषमा शिशिकटाक्ष हव्याजूतकुणारसपूर्ण पूर्ण शीतांशुकोटिशुषमा शिशिकटाक्ष हव्याजूतकुणारसपूर्ण पूर्ण कर्पूरधूलिव दिक्षु सी अंबक्षण स्नपयमाद्रिमा कर्पूरधूलिव दिक्षु सी अंबक्षण स्नपयमाद्रिमा
आविर्भव क्षण मीत कुचे पुस्ता अंबज्वरेण महता ममता पीत आविर्भव क्षण मीत कुचे पुस्ता अंबज्वरेण महता ममता पीत घृिचि जाल सुधा प्रवाहे मग्नस्तुता घृिचि जाल सुधा प्रवाहे मग्नस्तुता विधर्नलीन जातलिप्लकृप्त आनीत मूर्छमधिक क्षुभितैर्ज्वरारीधर्नलीन जातलिप्लकृप्त आनीत मूर्छमधिक क्षुभितैर्ज्वरादी आश्वासय क्षणमी कुचे कराग्र क्रीडा करनकहल्लक सौरभेण आश्वासय क्षणमी कुचे कराग्र क्रीडा करनकहल्लक सौरभेण कंठे विषम विषमुचो भुजगा कपर्दे पाश्वे च भूत पतय प्रमथा भीमा कंठे विषम विषमुचो भुजगा कपर्दे पाश्वे च भूत पतय प्रमथा भीमा शोणी चलेश मुपस्रृत्य भजेत को नस्यातावस विधे यदि सनिधान शोणी चलेश मुपस्रृत्य भजेत को नस्यातावस विधे यदि सनिधान शक्तिर्जगजन पालन भंजनेशु भोगेशु दिव्या महिषि तरुणेन्दु मौले शक्तिर्जगजन पालन भंजनेशु भोगेशु दिव्या महिषि तरुणेन्दु मौले सिद्धि कर प्रणयिनी तव सन्निधान तदपीत कुचे न जाने सिद्धि कर प्रणयिनी तव सन्निधान तदपीत कुचे न जाने तम साक्षिणी प्रलय भैरव तांडवाम शेषिणी सहरी धात्रचराचराण साक्षिणी प्रलय भैरव तांडवाम शेषिणी सहरी धात्रचराचराण मोचिनी सकल संस्कृति जालका ब्रह्मसंविदमपीतकुचेनमामि We thank Mr. Chitra Madhavan for the wonderful presentation. Please give a big hand. They were ably supported by Arthi and Archana. Our next program in this series is on 2nd January. A talk on the life history of V. Nagaya by V. Sri Ram. 
you may know veenagayya is one of the founders of thyagabrahma ganasabha a 75 year old institution thank you